inglese, quindi passo direttamente um, all'inglese. So, um, welcome everyone. Um, we're happy to invite you to the new edition of Graphic Days, uh, the edition of 2021. It's the sixth edition of the festival, and um, it will be open until the 26th of September, so um, for all of you, um, we welcome you to come back if you can, or for those watching us online, uh, we invite you to um, visit the, the festival before it ends, as it offers uh, numerous exhibitions, workshops, talks, and uh, creative activities, as well as a unique market fair um, that will take place the next weekend. So today is uh, dedicated to a very special project. Um, it's called Eyes on Ukraine, and we are welcoming you to to um, make a journey with us uh, inside the Ukrainian graphic scene. Eyes on uh, is an international exhibition that takes place, um, that's hosted uh, by Graphic Day since 2000, 2016, uh, the year when the festival was born. And uh, it aims at showcasing the history and the values of a selected country through graphic design works about people's everyday life, um, traditions, and culture. So during the previous editions, Graphic Days invited Spain, Poland, Romania, China, and the Netherlands to be the protagonists of a dedicated exhibition. But uh, this year, we have organized Eyes on Ukraine uh, together with the Ukrainian Institute um, with the will to show uh, to the international community the hidden potential of Ukraine's contemporary visual and graphic scenes, uh, giving priority to both the heritage of uh, the country and the most recent trends. So with the projects on show in a dedicated exhibition that is currently open at Toolbox Co-working, um, we, um, we want to showcase the unique visual identity of the country by presenting the famous designers that um, were defining the regions of the Ukrainian graphic design um, and the youngest advocates of the Ukrainian style. Among the invited entities, uh, there are some of the most renowned uh, representatives of the Ukrainian scene of graphics and illustration, including Pictoric Illustrators Club that will um, hold the, the talks uh, here today. Um, Telegraph Design Collective, Cultura Graphic Design Studio, and the winners of the best book design contest organized by the book um, Arsenal Festival of Kiev. So I would like to welcome um, Dario Arigotti, the honorary consul of Ukraine in Piedmont, to um, introduce the conference today. Good morning, and thank you for inviting uh, uh, the um, diplomatic uh, representatives of the government of Ukraine. The government of Ukraine is uh, represented today by Ms. Fufalco of the General Consulate of Ukraine in Milano. The General Consulate in Milano is responsible for uh, representing our government in the north of Italy, uh, which is Liguria, Lombardia, uh, Piemonte, Valle d'Aosta, all the northern Italy. And uh, I wish, uh, first of all, to convey to you uh, the um, greetings of the Consul General in Milano, Mr. Andrei Kartis, who could not be here, but uh, uh, sent uh, uh, this official uh, to also represent uh, the Consulate General. Mrs. Fufalco is uh, responsible for cultural affairs at the Consulate General. Um, I don't want to, to waste uh, your time because uh, I am not uh, indeed a specialist of the topics that you will discuss in, the, in, the, in today's meeting. However, I would like to convey to your, uh, to your attention uh, one message. I have been now in charge of uh, uh, the Ukrainian government in Piemonte for two and a half years. To my knowledge, this event in Torino is the most important example of, collabor of cultural collaboration between Italy and Ukraine that I have seen so far in the last two years and a half. I don't recall any other example of such a successful cooperation like this one. I must say I was really impressed when I looked at the program of this event and I can only hope that other Italian institutions will uh, replicate this type of experience in the years to come. You know, we have been through a very, a very tough and difficult period for the last year, uh, one year and a half, and, uh, but now time has arrived to 
resume our uh, co cultural cooperation. And uh, there are uh, ideas in the pipeline that I was discussing before with the representative of the city of Turin. Uh, and hopefully in the months and the years to come, there will be other occasions uh, to uh, foster the cooperation in all fields, not only cultural, but also social and economic cooperation between our two great countries. Let me express a personal opinion, and don't take it as the official opinion of the, of the Ukraine government, but just as a personal opinion. I feel that there is a guilty attitude on the side of the Italian media and the, of the Italian press in general regarding Ukraine. I think that uh, the Italian media and perhaps the Europe, unfortunately the European media do not cover enough what's going on in Ukraine today. Do not spread underst a better understanding of the situation of this uh, important European partner that we have in the heart of Europe, a large country with 46 million inhabitants, which is crucial in the future of East-West relations. And I must say that when I see the Italian press giving so much emphasis to an individual case, I'm referring to the unfortunate case of this uh, student, Egyptian student, who is detained uh, for political reasons in Egypt, but the coverage is, I, was, I must say, almost daily, almost, uh, if not daily, on a weekly basis, we, we have an update about the case of this uh, student who is in jail in Cairo, Mr. Zaki. We don't have any update whatsoever of what is going on in Ukraine. Ukraine is a situation where there, there is an illegal uh, occupation, an, a, 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 an evident violation of the international rights. And there are uh, thousands of citizens in Ukraine today who suffer for the violation of human rights and for the um, unlawful occupation of the Ukrainian land. We very rarely, very seldom see a coverage of this news, of these events, of this situation in the Italian press, in the Italian media. I think that this is really a shame and is very unfortunate. And uh, I, I would like to close it here, but I cared about expressing my dissatisfaction for what I see going on in this country, which is, should be a very important, a key partner of Ukraine in Europe. Um, as far as the topic which has been uh, chosen by, uh, by the organizers for this event, I am so glad that, uh, that uh, you took this initiative to showcase the richness of the visual arts from Ukraine in, in this northern city. I wonder if there is a possibility to replicate this event in other cities in Italy. Because in my opinion, it would be very important to have the same event in Milan or in Roma to, uh, to uh, allow other visitors to uh, understand uh, what's going on in this specific field in, in Ukraine these days. And uh, I remain at your disposal to facilitate maybe the contacts with other local administration uh, together with our colleagues of the Consulate General in Milano and of the, of the Embassy in Rome. Because I think that this is typic the typical example of something which took a lot of work and a lot of dedication to be organized. It would, it would be a real pity to do it only in one Italian town. I think this deserves a better knowledge in other large Italian cities. Thank you for what you have done and congratulations. And I apologize for leaving the conference early. Thank you so much, Dario Rigotti. Um, uh, now I invite um, Anastasia Yevseyeva. Um, she's the head of the visual arts uh, of the Ukrainian Institute uh, to tell us a little bit more about the mission of the organization uh, in terms of cultural promotion of Ukraine abroad. We have collaborated um, mainly with Anastasia in the last, uh, uh, in mm, all the period of preparation for the exhibition. So it's um, very important that you are here and that we are happy to have you finally in Italy and you can see it with your own eyes. So. 
Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure for me uh, to be here and to welcome you all at this great event. Um, I am the representative of the Ukrainian Institute. It's a state institution affiliated to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine that uh, had been initiated in 2018. And since then, we are working really intensively around the world. Uh, we have opened the visualized program within uh, which this project is happening in uh, 2019. Uh, as uh, the program aiming at supporting different uh, exhibition projects uh, showcasing Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian art uh, abroad. Uh, and uh, we were really honored and happy and lucky to have the Print Club Torino and Pictoric Illustration Club as the winners of the first uh, open call of this program. Um, and apart from that, we are also open or have already opened an exhibition in Gdansk in Poland commemorating the tragedy of Baban Yar uh, called the Trees of Memory Roots and Runners. Those were two winners of the first open call. Um, for me, it's a big interest and a big pleasure and great excitement to have this conversation today and be present here and be showcasing Ukrainian illustration, which I think is a great example of Ukrainian visual art, uh, especially uh, to be showcasing its origins uh, from the Ukrainian National Republic of the beginning of 20th century and um, especially the Narbut uh, graphics uh, and to have our colleagues from the Pictoric Illustration Club from Serigraph uh, um, joining us and uh, telling more and portraying more about uh, um, Ukrainian illustration and it's uh, at its contemporary stage. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the exhibition and today's talk and thank you all for joining us at this event. Thank you. Um, thank you, Anastasia. So uh, today is uh, divided basically in uh, three main uh, events. And uh, the first talk, um, the, both of the talks will be held by the Pictoric Illustrators Club. And the first one is uh, dedicated to uh, the Ukrainian children's illustration in the 20th century. So during this talk, um, members of Pictoric will go through the um, history of Ukrainian illustration in the 20th century from its origins and roots uh, to the main artists who formed its visual language. And the second part will be also conducted by Pictoric and uh, they will tell us a little bit more about the past 10 years that um, has been a great time of uh, development of the Ukrainian creative scene and the creative communities. So using the, uh, the example of uh, Pictoric Illustrators Club, they will um, talk about the principal ideas that led to active change um, and they will also uh, discuss about the challenges that artists um, uh, face during the project implementation. Uh, but before starting, um, I want to mention that there are also um, Yevgenia Palosina and um, uh, Anna Ivanenka that are currently holding a workshop uh, on uh, screen printing uh, here in Print Club Torino. Uh, so they unfortunately couldn't uh, be present uh, during the talk. Um, but uh, together with, with the participants of the workshop, they are um, um, trying to create the new world made of postmodern buildings, roads, and landscapes. So, um, in, in, and for now, I want to invite Olya Grishenko, um, Anna Sarvira, and um, Alona Staranchuk to, uh, for, for the first talk, and then we will have a short break and the second talk. Hi, nice to meet you all. Grazie per essere qui. Io parlo un po' di italiano, ma facciamo la lezione in inglese. We are very happy to see you all here, and... Here starts the good English <laughs> level, and we, if you want to understand something, please don't hesitate to ask us, because we are a bit nervous, we are artists, and we are not so often talking, we are mostly painting and drawing, so, yeah. And we will start uh, with Oleg, uh, the talk about Ukrainian illustration uh, in 20th century, and as it was mentioned before, uh, the whole politician situation in Ukraine Ukraine was never very simple and we had a lot of problems and it was also, you will see that uh, during our talk because uh, all the illustrators that we choose, they, they suffered, <laughs> most of them <laughs> suffered and mo a lot of them lived not such a long life like they could <laughs> and did not so much as they could uh, but still uh, they were fighting and they did a great job. We choose 15 illustrators that can be interesting for you 
Uh, there are much more, but it would be a big deal to show them all. So, and if our English won't be good enough, the illustrations are still really great, the illustrations that we choose. And um, most of them are not only well known abroad, but not so many people know about these illustrators in Ukraine as well, because some of them were working during Soviet times, and some of them were killed during Soviet times, so uh, not so many people know about them. And actually, Oleg Grishenko, who is sitting next to me, <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, he no. is a yeah, professor in our Art Academy of uh, Ukraine, and he's actually one of those people who are discovering these illustrators again and again, so he, it's his lecture, and <laughs> he knows a lot about those illustrators. I'm here, like I was, uh, really imp impressed by what he found out and he actually was visiting a lot of uh, studios of these artists who are still alive and he collected some works from them so yeah if you will have more questions about those illustrators uh, don't hesitate to ask him <laughs> and me a bit yeah and we will start from 1917 where actually Ukra Ukraine got its own independent for the first time it was a great <laughs> time back then and Oleg will start with uh, Grigory Narbut yeah, and um, <coughs> we'll start uh, from uh, 1917 years because it's a year um, where Ukraine first day uh, became uh, independent, and uh, we we'll start uh, with Georgi uh, Narbut. Yeah, it's um, con uh, considered like a founder of Ukrainian book design and illustrator, and it's uh, one of them. <coughs> First artist who work only in uh, printing media, um, they work a lot with a book, with a magazine cover, with the design of uh, money emblem, and so on and so on. And it is a page from uh, Ukrainian alphabet, and uh, he started work uh, from uh, that maybe uh, in a twenties. Uh, 1917, yeah, but unfortunately uh, it's uh, not uh, completed uh, due to early death of uh, Georgi Narbut in uh, 34 years. And it's, it's actually our drama here, <laughs> it's why we are crying inside, because we are all more than 34 and we are still not so cool as Narbut. <laughs> yeah, because he actually yeah, did a great job, as you can see. Yeah, and uh, it's 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 really a very famous um, project, and uh, you can see all book about uh, Gary Narbut in exhibition. Yeah, it's a great example of Ukrainian graphic, classic graphic. Just a moment. Oh, good. And uh, this is an alphabet. It's uh, not. Uh, Childish, childish uh, book in a modern sense of this word because it's uh, a little bit weird for for children in a, in a, um, my opinion yeah in nobody opinion but uh, for example it's a Ukrainian letter Ch and we can uh, uh, look on a, a lot of demons who, who drink uh, tea from the teapots uh, at night because uh, all this world uh, start to Ukrainian Chi. And I think it's uh, not like an alphabet for children, uh, it's uh, like an uh, artistic act in the beginning of um, the 20th century because it's the first uh, Ukrainian alphabet in independent country. And uh, Jorge Narbu tried to uh, combine all Ukrainian visual culture in, uh, in these uh, pages. Yeah? You can see like, Ukrainian history, emblems, uh, hetmans, and so on and so on, and architect. Just a moment. Oh, yeah. And uh, when we looked on uh, all uh, Hiro Hinarbut um, works, uh, we can we can call to him like a kind rock star in <laughs> in Ukraine uh, design and uh, illust illustration in the beginning of the 20th century because uh, he lived a short life but uh, did a lot. Uh, he was co-founder of Ukrainian National Academy of Art and uh, he designed first Ukrainian money and Ukrainian national emblem and so on and so on, a lot of books and uh, uh, many illustrators from beginning on 20th century consider followers of uh, Georgi Narbut and it's a beautiful person for start <laughs> this uh, presentation I think. 
Yeah, it's, I think, one of the most well-known uh, illustrators from 20th century in Ukraine. And yeah, he was really a rock star because he was also a rector of Art Academy in the age of 34 already, and the professor, and he made a design of all the Ukrainian money, and I think that um, they made the design of the symbols of yeah. Ukraine. Yeah, so he was... Uh, but uh, another hand, in the uh, beginning of 20th century in Ukraine, uh, we were um, a lot of uh, artistic style and trends, and uh, one of them it's um, a group of artists who inspired uh, of neo Byzantine style and inspired uh, neo painting, folk painting, and uh, ancient icon art, and tried to design it with uh, uh, communistic propaganda. But uh, in uh, uh, nowadays, it looks a little bit weird, but very interesting uh, from the uh, artistic uh, way. Uh, for example, uh, in, uh, on the left uh, picture, yeah, uh, we, can, we can look on the propaganda of reading. Yeah, That's and the uh, worst propaganda you can have, actually. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's a uh, draw like uh, Asian uh, engraving style. And But I think it's a very nice example for kids. Yeah, uh, When you can read, you don't have to work hard in the field. Yeah, <laughs> You can just read a newspaper for workers. Yeah? It's more easy, I think. Um, but in general, this is a style. Uh, it's style of Ivan Padelka, one of the uh, artists from this group. It's in Ukraine. It's called Boychukist, uh, uh, from the uh, name of the founder of this group, uh, Mikhailo Boychuk. And Ivan Padelka uh, uh, was uh, the most famous uh, illustrator from this group. And. Um, on, on the next uh, pages, it's uh, him uh, illustration for children, and this is, is and this style. It looks very fresh and and looks like uh, I don't know modern book with a panton and so on and so on. And uh, you can uh, see on the dog house. For me, it's a it's a masterpiece. It looks like a book from I don't know some Ichinori or something else. Yeah, yeah it's, it's something like you you would choose for Bologna illustration exhibition. Yeah, <laughs> something you can see here. Yeah, but uh, it is a, <coughs> a little story from uh, real life. Yeah, in, uh, we can look to the last uh, last picture. It's um, in the end of this book. Um, main characters. Um, is uh, helped by Soviet soldier. Yeah, it's uh, killed uh, um, enemy. Yeah, L like a crow. Uh, but uh, in a real life, uh, Ivan Padelka was killed by Soviet uh, soldier uh, during the communist terror in Ukraine. Yeah, unfortunately. But uh, he uh, lived for us a, a lot of beautiful books and works and so on and so on. Yeah, and what uh, we should say, like Padelka worked in twenty. Uh, no, 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 no. Padelka worked on nineteen twenties, and back then it already started this a bit of propaganda, a bit of uh, Soviet pressure about how the art should look. So, for example, Serhii Kononchuk, he worked in twenties and thirties, and he, I think, he also died pretty young in nineteen forty-one. But yeah, uh, back then the artist had to develop the new style uh, that would fit the propaganda style of Soviet times, and it had to be totally different from what we had before, like not so aristocrat, not so fancy, not so much decor, it would had to be more simple, more like a poster, so people would understand and would see the main um, thing that uh, those posters and illustrations had to say to people. And Sergei uh, Kononchuk uh, also did illustrations in the simple way, with not so much decor. Um, give me a yeah, uh, it's actually one of the, uh, I think, favorite books of Oleg, uh, The Red Chicken. Yeah, and you can see it's also like a very simple poster style. It's a bit influenced by Narbut as well, especially the fonts, and it's also influenced by the folk art, and actually back then it was still possible to use this folk art in illustrations because um, talking about your origins and your nationality in Soviet times was not, not so uh, simple, uh, but uh, in illustration, artists still could uh, show these uh, folk origins and uh, this style. So a lot of illustrators back then um, used these folk um, motifs in their art. 
<laughs> it's actually very dramatic in the world. <laughs> it's one of our favorite books about Kolobok. I don't know if you know that it's about the bread that became alive and it escaped from uh, the people who did it. And this round bread, who is actually screaming there, <laughs> uh, was running through the forest and meeting some uh, animals. And you can see that the illustration is pretty dramatic, pretty simple, with only a few colors. Um, I'm always thinking that something like in Bologna Book Fair would be super popular nowadays, something like this illustration. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, the funny thing is, like back then, they were not uh, really thinking about how the kids will uh, think, what, what kids will think about the illustration. Will they get dep depressed by these illustrations? <laughs> so, the next picture you will see is <laughs> the dead color box. And it's actually funny how they. <laughs> Uh, how brave they were, the illustrators, to do something like that. We are not sure if it's uh, the blood or the tears from Kolobok, who will, was actually killed in the end of this fairy tale. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But I think it's a um, uh, truly story, and kids um, have to know uh, <laughs> you mustn't go on in a forest alone. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> because it's some fox can eat, in, uh, eat you. And, um, but uh, in a um, Artistic style, it is a great work for us, and now we, we think it's a um, it's very brave illustration for nowadays, for example. And uh, now um, uh, we, we try to continue, and uh, we miss uh, a few decades, uh, for example, and uh, 40s and uh, uh, 50s years in the 20th century, because it's uh, very hard years uh, in a history, and uh, a lot of children's books uh, draw in this time, but it's not so unique. Yeah, it's it's uh, about pioneers, about some communistic style, and so on and so on. And uh, a new uh, cultural boom uh, became in Ukraine in the 16th year and early 70s. Uh, and it's uh, in general, it's uh, cultural boom in. Uh, painting, in uh, literature, in uh, poetry, and, and so on and so on. Yeah, it was a time when there was not so much pressure for uh, the artists in general, so that you could do much more. But in the end, all those people were killed in the end of the 60s, but uh, on this de decade, they can yeah. work a bit more and do what they wanted to do. Yeah, and uh, in this time, uh, the Ukraine uh, government uh, published house, it's called Veselka, it's like a rainbow in, in English, uh, start to print a lot of very fresh and bright uh, books for children. And for example, one of the trends at the time, it's like an um, invite to illustrate uh, children's book, a famous uh, folk artist, a naive artist who never uh, did it before. It's an uh, example, uh, illustration um, by uh, Maria Primachenko. It's a very, very famous Ukrainian artist, a folk artist, and this is a cover for one of uh, her books. And uh, we, uh, we can see how uh, uh, Maria Primachenko uh, used uh, folk uh, motifs, uh, folk painting in uh, illustration for children. And uh, very interesting for us, like uh, artists and or teachers, it's a page with a text. It uh, imitate uh, like a wall painting in Ukrainian house, yeah, a folk painting. Uh, I think it's very fresh for design in, in that time, like uh, combine um, your um, uh, folk interior in uh, books for kids. It's next one, you can see. The <coughs> uh, Primachenka is one of the symbols, I guess, of uh, Ukrainian art and actually that the most one of the most famous artists in our lecture. Yeah. And uh, unique of this book, it's like a combine uh, Maria Primachenko, like a very famous uh, Ukrainian artist, and uh, Mikhailo Stelmach, like a really famous Ukrainian uh, poet. Uh, but it's poet for adults. But uh, uh, this is a unique book when uh, a big Ukrainian poet tried to uh, wrote something for kids. It's it's, it's very good. It's a uh, great artist and great poet in, in one book, one very small book. Mm. It's uh, my favorite illustration with a, ra with the, uh, with a rabbit, yeah. <laughs> ah, it's not good. Yeah. 
I, and if Oleg talked about Maria Primachenko, who was a self-taught artist, and she never studied anywhere, and she just was sitting in her small village and painting, and everybody around thought that she's a bit crazy. Yeah, uh, Vyacheslav Lechkobit was one of those artists who was actually, he uh, studied in art academy, and he knew a lot about how to draw, but he was very inspired by uh, Ukrainian folk art, and uh, he liked a lot this naive style, so he also, and he actually did the books uh, in this naive style, but he not knew how to do that, like in general, how to construct the book, how to pu put illustration in this book, so he was more like a professional artist, but still he worked in a very simple way, with, with the very simple colors. Um, uh, because uh, I, I think Ukrainian uh, artists use this uh, technique because it um, want to uh, run away from uh, communist realism style uh, and uh, say it's, it's just uh, folk art. It's uh, uh, I don't know. It's uh, I'm copy like a, a naive painting, and uh, it's because in. A, uh, in, in Ukraine, in, in Soviet time, in a published uh, house, uh, was big uh, press of uh, censorship, and it's it's very difficult to stay unique, like like uh, like art artist, uh, like yeah. illustrator, and some some guys like Vyacheslav like a bit tried to uh, maybe imitate a little bit uh, new painting for for that, and uh, in general uh, illustrated Ukrainian fairy tales. And, and and small uh, poetry. Yeah, if you're illustrating a fairy tale, you can easily escape from the social realism we had to do, and you could say, oh, it's a something folk I'm illustrating, so I can do that. Yeah. I don't think you could draw something like that about pioneers, and that's one of the also like fav most favorite Alex illustrations. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know it. Um, we uh, choose uh, our favorite <laughs> uh, illustrator illustration uh, because we are. We, we are really happy to tell something <laughs> about that, and uh, it is a, s a small rabbit uh, from Ukrainian fairy tale, and um, he, I think he or she, I don't know, uh, bribed to the main characters for for freedom, and uh, it's on this illustration we can uh, uh, look on uh, like a rabbit go from the dark of prison to the <laughs> light of of the of the freedom, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it, it's it's really cool uh, in a um, children illustration. Yeah, it's more like a poster <laughs> about the freedom of the illustration. Uh, yeah, and still you can see here those those very simple illustrations, uh, which is like a bit. Indeed. Yeah, but very powerful in in a yeah. in, in a color and forms and so on. It's it's very famous uh, children books in uh, Soviet Ukraine. It's it's interesting, we grew up on those, those books, but we no, never know about illustrators themselves. So I discovered those illustrators like maybe five years ago when uh, we started, uh, uh, not actually we, some uh, institutions started research on, on these books and illustrators <laughs> of 50s or 60s. Pardon, sorry. And, um, uh, before uh, continue, uh, we should uh, talk about a little bit about um, realities of, of the time. And um, how, I, how I said, it's uh, in um, a Soviet uh, Soviet time. Um, government government have, uh, has a monopoly in art, and uh, when you was, for example, paint uh, painter, yeah, and uh, you can. Uh, show on an exhibition just uh, work in a realism style with uh, party leaders or Lenins or I don't know some workers and uh, if you want to paint uh, pa painting in uh, some unique style or avant-garde style or something else uh, you can uh, choose or work uh, all time just in your studio and hide your works and f f f from government yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah for government but uh, a lot of uh, painters uh, uh, go to the children books in a children illustration because it's uh, in a children illustration that you can uh, experimental with the techniques with the, with your style and uh, you can 
hide from uh, censorship, from communist censorship. And it's this example of um, Nina Denisova, is a very great uh, Ukrainian uh, artist. It's uh, that uh, illustration for children's poetry. She, Ukrainian. Was a, she was a painter, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, yeah. And after um, the Soviet Union collapse, uh, she returned to the painting, to the canvas and oil and have a lot of exhibition in museum and gallery. But in Soviet time, uh, she worked like an illustrator for money, for, for love and for, for some uh, inner, inner happiness. And experiments. Yeah. And uh, uh, she, she worked in the very, very you know, bright styles and combine some very uh, contrast colors and uh, experimental with the uh, forms, uh, with uh, people and uh, how I can draw the people and uh, time to time combine uh, Ukrainian ancient tr tradition in a graphic and mm. uh, combine some very strange uh, colors yeah, for children's books. But it looks really fresh and uh, very professional. Uh, in uh, uh, ch childhood, I I don't love this illustration. Yeah, it, it's true. I I don't understand this illustration. Uh, but now, when I when I say like a teacher <laughs> of illustration, I think it's it's really a masterpiece of painting of graphics, graphic illustration. And uh, but uh, I don't know uh, how. Mm, how uh, nowadays children can can f uh, what c can feel yeah, yeah it would when be look on this illustration yeah, if some uh, some kids love this <laughs> yeah because i think adults do <laughs> but yeah but for example my sister really loves this style but yeah she's a big one <laughs> she's the grown up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it is a good case it's a uh, uh, new work by nina denisova it's uh, maybe 2007 yeah, and uh, you can look uh, uh, how she work uh, in in the days, how uh, change techniques are not. Yeah, but it's um, a unique case because Nina Denisova uh, s learned uh, Adobe, and uh, all books uh, um, post produced by by uh, herself. Yeah, and uh, make a layout for print uh, in a. 70 years old. Yeah, it, it's a, for me it's a great, great challenge yeah, for artists. Like a, a little bit um, change the, the rules of art. Yeah, I but I think yeah, for Ukrainian artists, uh, like it's a big deal. I think all our professors uh, we studied with in art academy, it was 20 years ago, they still didn't use the computer and I don't think they're using them now. And it's okay, but when somebody says, oh, I learned at Photoshop in when I was 70, it's, it's cool, <laughs> yeah, because it's something you're changing. Yeah. It's uh, another one, uh, very famous Ukrainian painter, uh, Ivan Valentin Zadrozhny, but uh, mm, he worked a lot in uh, kids' illustration, and in, in this style, uh, he... Uh, uh, very impressed uh, from monumental painting, fre Ukrainian frescoes and mosaics, and try to combine uh, Ukrainian fairy tale. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's not <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, and uh, like a copy some uh, some figure from uh, Ukrainian ancient uh, mosaics. Mm, but uh, this style also good for um, presentation. Uh, I don't know, happy life of uh, Ukrainian peasants, yeah, and and uh, village, and uh, you know, people in the field, uh, Soviet people. But uh, uh, we can look. Uh, it's uh, the same composition, like a book with uh, by Maria Primashenko, yes, with mm. a, pe uh, a page with that type. Yeah, it's ornamental, uh, have ornamental frame. Uh, because uh, I think it's um, all artists try to uh, I don't know, uh, take take the, the the best decision from per previous book. But they uh, were also all inspired still by the folk art in from Ukraine. Yeah. A bit. <laughs> That's a moment. Sorry. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Okay. And um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we actually divided the illustrators a bit, so who likes whom. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is actually our professor uh, from the Academy of Fine Art, mine and Oleg's, Halina Halinska. And she actually worked in uh, the end of 70s and 80s, and I don't think she ever worked after that. I don't know, maybe she was a bit uh, depressed by all things that were happening in 19s in Ukrainian uh, cultural field, but uh, that's the art she did uh, back then. And in 80s especially, all the illustrators were very inspired by European classical art, and uh, they were... Um, a bit moving away from the folk art and they wanted to do something really serious and great. And also you should consider that the um, Soviet uh, pressure was already not so big back then. So you could experiment a bit more and you could actually show that you like the European classical style because it would be a bit strange for Soviet propaganda to propagand these European styles. But uh, yeah, our uh, professor already could do that and she actually worked in this very interesting uh, style of uh, ink uh, drawings and co colored backgrounds. And we also think it was a bit uh, because of uh, the um, quality of printing of the books. So all illustrators are not all, all mostly not happy with how the books were printed back then. So uh, they tr tried to find out the way how they can draw and it will be printed um, as they planned it to be. <laughs> and they were also like, um, if we were talking about 60s, for example, they were illustrating most, mostly these folk fairy tales, uh, Ukrainian ones, and in 80s um, they were popular those uh, European fairy tales like Charles Perrault and uh, Brothers Grimm. So the <laughs> it was totally different style. And this is another famous illustrator, Katerina Stanko. She also has a son who is also a famous illustrator, so it's a dynasty <laughs> there. Yeah. And she's still working, she's doing a lot of things. And I think she's also working in computer yeah. now. No, no, no? no okay. I think it's uh, by <laughs> Okay, hand. so they're, they're both not uh, using Photoshop. <laughs> um. yeah, it's uh, next. Yeah, and okay. she's one of the most famous, I guess, uh, illustrators nowadays in Ukraine. Like, all of us grew up on her illustrations. Yeah, uh, it's the work of uh, Valentina Melnichenko. It's uh, one of the, my favorite illustrations in childhood. I really love uh, uh, her art. And it is um, the same case like a previous... Uh, uh, works uh, when uh, Ukrainian illustrators try to uh, work uh, on a base European classic art and, for example, Flemish uh, art. Yeah, I think yeah, the painting school. Yeah, yeah. And this is um, how it's called, a uh, little uh, red hood. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah, it uh, looks like a, a deny by Rembrandt. I think yeah, in a. Uh, uh, it's very dr dramatical uh, spreads, but in a case uh, Valent uh, Valentina Primachenko, very interesting how uh, um, artists uh, like uh, transfer uh, European classic graphic style in a Ukrainian fairy tale. It's uh, uh, it's. Um, Called I don't know uh, like a, in Ukraine it's called the Krivenka Kashichka, but I think it's we can translate like an injured duck, and uh, we, but in this colors and this graphic style it looks like a f some Flemish Flemish drawing in the 17th century, or in the next bridge. Oh sorry, it's not. Uh, next bridge uh, we can look on the illustration and uh, feel how. How big influence uh, on uh, artists have um, classic art? It's composition like uh, some painting uh, f with Jesus and Holy Family. Yeah, but uh, instead of Jesus, it's dark. But it's work it uh, in a, a children's book. But in the uh, same time, just a moment. I try to oh, put good. Uh, Valentina Primashenko works in. A uh, more close to uh, Ukraine style uh, in illustration, and uh, it's uh, it's it's very popular uh, techniques at the time. Like um, it's a uh, color background and uh, uh, black outlines. I think it's uh, very popular because it's, it's 
was good for uh, polygraphy, for, for printing, uh, be because I am, I am reminded a lot of really, really bad printing uh, books for children in Soviet time. It's, uh, it's disappointed, <laughs> it's very disappointed. Uh, for example, it's an uh, illustration for Ukraine uh, Lulibabin. You can look on the, this work. And uh, next one, it's uh, Voldemar Holozubo. It's a work in the same technique, but uh, have uh, own unique style in graphic. Um, he work with uh, a lot of small details and uh, uh, small figures and so on and so on. But in uh, his case, uh, here illustrate very, very small uh, poetry for kids. And all these uh, characters, uh, uh, you, you cannot find uh, them in a text. He fantasy them uh, for illustration and try to uh, depict all fantasy world for, for kids. And in the childhood, it, it's very, very impressive. For example, it's about lazy bird, one lazy bird in the family. It's a very sad story. Uh, or it's... Uh, hmm? uh, uh, it's something we don't know in English. Yeah, <laughs> just a moment, we forgot yeah. one word. But okay. it's, uh, I think it's a uh, right lesson or not. Okay. It uh, doesn't matter. Uh, but in general, it's a, a great illustration in the same style with a lot of little animals. And I, in childhood, I really love um, left one when um, rabbit, bear, duck uh, call for, for something. Can I think uh, what about uh, they can talk? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, how? Uh, what? Uh, I believe he, they can talk, <laughs> but uh, your time try to fantasy something uh, when when looked on this illustration. But it's interesting, yeah, that everything was changing so fast, like in the styles as well. And as soon as we got rid of this uh, propaganda, we f changed the other, uh, we faced the other challenge, challenge because nineties in Ukraine were a pretty hard time. Mm, uh, the Soviet uh, broke up. We got independence. It was cool, but economically it was pretty hard uh, to live back then. And uh, actually, the culture was not on the first place for Ukrainians. And also, we got a lot of stuff from Western world, like Disney and everything, Coca Cola and <laughs> like. Uh, all those um, things became extremely popular, like all those cues to McDonald's and whatever. And also, we got a lot of strange illustrations in the style of Disney, and people were like, yeah, that's cool, finally we have it, like, not because they were not very happy with what we had before. Yeah, and some, but still some of the illustrators were doing a great job. It's also our professor from Academy of Fine Art, Oleg Petrenko, and he also is one of the most famous illustrators nowadays. Um, he, one of his work was chosen to Bologna Book Fair in the 90s. I think it's the book about... The next one? No, 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 no. The, no? Book, the uh, book about the pig was yeah. the first one, oh. yeah. But the funny thing is that no publishers wanted to publish him because it was not Disney. So they were like, oh, you're doing something really strange. We are not sure if it will be popular. And then he got uh, his works into this Bologna Book Fair. And then the publishers were like, okay, maybe we will try. And now with this book is one of the most famous in Ukraine about this small funny pig. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, it, it's interesting because it's one of the artists I knew from my childhood and I could see how he developed his style uh, through all those decades. He's still working, and the next uh, picture Oleg will show us yeah. is how he works now. For example, the, he, this work was also chosen to Bologna Book Fair, but already in 2017 or so, and he like extre changed extremely uh, his style, but it's cool, he can experiment. We have no pressure now, and he's famous, so he, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> it's the dream of all illustrators, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and um, after 19 years, uh, maybe new, some uh, new, I don't know, like uh, 
new, new decade in Ukraine are to start to maybe 2010. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, till till nowadays, uh, and um, a lot of uh, modern Ukrainian illustrators start to uh, work on a very interesting book project. And in general, in uh, modern Ukrainian illustrat illustration, we can uh, choose on the three way of style, and one of the way it's. Uh, uh, <coughs> work of uh, by uh, Roman Romanishin and Andrei Lesiv is work in a um, picture book and uh, try to uh, told and draw own stories for for kids and uh, for some actu actual uh, actually themes for Ukraine. In for example, it's for war. Yeah. Or s I think we started. Uh, yes, I think we started traveling a bit more. Our yeah. illustrators. We visited all those book fairs. We visited other countries. We saw how it works. For example, mm, like 20 years ago, nobody told us, like when we were studying with Oleg, that you can do your own book and it will be cool. But for uh, Roman and Andre were the first ones who started producing their totally own books with the stories, with everything in it, uh, and they got a great success in this style. And I think you have those books published also in Italy uh, yeah. from Roman uh, and Andrei. Yeah, we, we show uh, some uh, new books because we, because we don't want to finish our presentation in the uh, bad 90s, yeah? <laughs> and we uh, decided to show some uh, new way of Ukrainian illustration. And next one, it's uh, Polina Doroshenko, and uh, she tried to continue Ukrainian traditional style in, a, in some modern book and the Ukrainian uh, decorative way of the illustration, I think. Uh, for me, it's, it's really, really important uh, because uh, we uh, not so many uh, Ukrainian young artists try to continue Ukrainian uh, traditional style in illustration. And last one, for example, it's a work by Anya Servira. It's oh, it's a very uh, cool uh, artist, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um, some artist and Anya Sarvir <laughs> to uh, try to work very um, uh, expressive and uh, fresh in uh, that illustration and uh, in general works in the digital. And this is the last illustration in our, our um, presentation. Yeah, it's yeah. sad because our presentation uh, are ending. Yeah, it's, uh, you can but see that Tanya doesn't l l like to spend much time on drawing <laughs> now, but in general, uh, all the illustrators we showed the last three, you can see them, their works on our exhibition, and we are trying to choose the illustrators for our exhibitions so they can represent diff a bit different styles. We still have uh, the styles we like, but we are trying to make them a bit different. And the people who are participating uh, in our exhibitions, they're experimenting a lot. I think... Um, I'm not talking about me, but for example, Romana or Polina, they're doing very different illustrations and you can always be surprised by when you see their new books. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very, very short presentation about Ukrainian uh, illustration uh, after the last uh, 100 years. Uh, of course, uh, we are, don't include a lot of, lot of very interesting illustration, illustrators, but we, we cannot to do, <laughs> to do that, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, we have a short break now, maybe t uh, ten, 10 minutes. Yeah. Five and minutes, <laughs> three minutes. <laughs> and know. We, yeah, we can talk about pictoric then and yeah. cultural field in Ukraine. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we will uh, have a short 10 minute break and uh, then uh, you're welcome to come back uh, for the second part of the conversation. And um, yes, it, as they already mentioned, all the works, all the books are on show in, to, in, um, in the exhibition space at Toolbox Corking, so make sure to uh, uh, visit them. So, yeah, see you in 10 minutes.
So um, we can start the second part. Um, back with Anna and Oleg. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. We are most talkative from Pictoric. <laughs> yeah, and we will talk ab more about what are we and what are we doing and why are we doing that and how it all happened and it all happened accidentally actually. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, um, Victoria Illustrators Club was uh, founded in 2014, and there were four co-founders of uh, this club: uh, Oleg, uh, me, Lena, who is hiding there, and Nastya Denisenko. She left the club because it's actually a big deal to organize all that. It's not our main job. We are doing it after the main job. It's, you're usually doing that at night or <laughs> on your weekends. <laughs> and yeah, so it's uh, something pretty hard to do. Uh, but uh, yeah. uh, um, what we should say uh, that uh, Pictoric actually, what is the difference uh, of being the organizing of uh, cultural institution in Ukraine is uh, that uh, when we organized Pictoric, we didn't have so, ma so many uh, state institutions that were uh, doing culture in Ukraine. So, for example, if in Italy you have Instituto di Cultura Italiana, in Ukraine we didn't have uh, any, almost anything back then, so we were just like people who were trying to do something <laughs> and uh, we were trying. Nowadays it's much easier because, for example, this uh, part of Ukrainian part of exhibition is sponsored by Ukrainian Institute and we are re really happy that we have these institutions nowadays and it's really great that you are not doing uh, the cultural events on your own and there are always people who are supporting you and who are interested in showing Ukrainian art abroad. Um, so nowadays it's much easier, but th back then when we started we were a bit like lost illustrators who just knew a lot of other illustrators and we just wanted to show what we have, what we know. We were not very happy with, with, was, with what was happening in Ukraine and we just uh, accidentally met and we decided uh, to do one small thing, we decided to do one small exhibition and then we found out that there is uh, um, there are a lot of people who are interested in that and we had to do more exhibitions. <laughs> we were <laughs> basically forced to do them. So um, we, that's our target audience and we actually don't know who all those people are <laughs> in general because every time we are doing a project when we think, okay, our audience will be kids, uh, then we have uh, adults who are coming and saying, oh, that's a great project, we need that and kids are not so interested, so <laughs> we are a bit failing on doing that, but yeah, we, all, all things that we are doing are coming from our like interests and we are, we are trying to do that as a hobby, so all, all the projects we are doing are interested, uh, interesting for ourselves and it's really great for us then. Um, uh, yeah, it's us. Uh, <laughs> and we don't have a nice photos of us, uh, all three together. <laughs> uh, and we are suffering a bit. Uh, but it's okay. Yeah, so I will start with very, um, like, the biggest project we did. And uh, I also have to say that we have uh, some different um, projects we are doing. So, first of them are Ukrainian projects. They are done for Ukrainian audience. And we are, when we are thinking about these projects, we are mainly thinking about Ukrainians that will... Uh, see those uh, things. Uh, and our most successful project was uh, Prominent Ukrainians. And it was shown like everywhere, like one million times. And it, it happened accidentally. We were just asked to draw a few portraits, a few posters of Ukrainian writers uh, in the very beginning of our pro uh, like uh, creator's life. And we did those posters and people said, oh, that's great, you should do more. <laughs> We started. Uh, we stopped doing this project maybe two years ago because we were extremely tired of drawing posters. We, I think we have more than 100 posters done uh, with this project. Here they are. Yeah, and we. I think we offered like more than 40 illustrators to join this project. And the great thing here. Uh, was that we, we are never telling people how to draw and what to draw. We are just saying, come on, we have a list of people you can draw, you can do whatever, and it's a great thing for illustrators. Um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and <coughs> very interesting uh, case because we uh, start from uh, writers, Ukrainian writers, um, for school program. And after that, uh, 
people from another profession professions to say we're engineers we're <laughs> historical guys why why you draw just writers yeah we're artists and sportsmen and we think okay we try to do for that and uh, like um, Anya said uh, we start uh, draw poster for kids but after that a lot of uh, adult people say uh, it's a great posters I um, mm, you know decorate all, all my flats these posters and so on and so on I uh, present this poster in my school w w when I grow up and uh, I think uh, it's 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 uh, right way to communicate with the people and uh, this is project start to uh, for a lot of collaboration with some NGO and uh, regional uh, groups of uh, activists in Ukraine. And I think uh, it's in Ukraine it's the right way for art project. When you start to do something for, for themselves, yeah, for, for yourself. For yourself yeah. Yeah. And after that, uh, uh, some active people uh, try to invite you in collaboration and uh, propose some some crazy collaboration what you can uh, imagine before yeah like for example those uh, posters were exhibited somewhere in the airport and we got a lot of new connections with uh, foreign partners because they were just like traveling through ukraine they saw posters they said oh who is doing that we should know them and it was great from the other side uh, we did it for ukrainians and we got a lot of requests from ukrainian uh, people from the small cities to show these posters in the small cities, even if they didn't have any place to showcase those posters, we were just putting the posters in some library on the chairs, and it was still great. And uh, I think it's the way we, s we are supporting the this decentralization, because in Ukraine, you're mostly having cool events in the big cities, especially in Kiev, and nothing else is happening in the smaller cities. But uh, there are activists in those cities who are actually offering us uh, from time to time to to show something from our posters. Yeah, it's actually the photo from the airport exhibition. Yes. I think and we... Uh, sorry, yeah. and, and this one, it is a great <laughs> case. And uh, we just tried to find uh, uh, some money for print uh, our first catalog with these p posters and we ask uh, some of our friends, our friends ask another guy and another guy and another guy. And uh, in general, uh, in a final, um, we have we have exhibition in uh, administrative of president of Ukraine, <laughs> yeah, with this uh, poster because um, some curators um, who try to change Ukrainian government inside, like uh, a visual style inside, um, uh, founded art gallery in the second floor in um, administration, and we are opening this gallery. It's it's something crazy, cra crazy. Uh, I don't know, it's just challenge crazy. for us. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It, it, it's, it, for us, it, it's like a, some fairy tale, yeah? We, we just uh, try to find a little s money for, for printing, <laughs> but in, uh, in finally we have a big mm -hmm. exhibition. But it's interesting that it w in Ukraine it was working in a bit of a different way, so you're not applying for the grant or something, you're just asking friends, and friends are asking, asking friends, so it's more like about talking <laughs> how it worked before, yeah. Uh, just a moment. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> it's a game. Uh, yeah, it's how it started. Actually, it's the first 20 posters we did. It was very small exhibition, and it was actually interesting for na for us as an artist uh, to participate in this project as well because back then we didn't participate in so many. Uh, collective projects and when I was drawing for example my poster I, I was not so freely drawing that like um, my poster is Alexander Dovzhenko and some of the, you already saw my uh, letters work and I, I was really impressed by how other people did their posters so I was thinking something oh I should draw Dovzhenko as uh, realistic as possible and then I saw Lena's for example poster of Ivan Bagliani who was extremely crazy and I was thinking something like oh my god you, should, you can do something like that and I also started following other people's styles and it was like cool thing for me it was even better than studying in art academy <laughs> because you could you could compare yourself to other illustrators and uh, try other styles yeah it's our very 
cool and very, like, I think she's like one of the greatest Ukrainian illustrators nowadays, Julia Tveritina. I don't know if you can find her on Instagram. And uh, she actually now li nowadays lives in China, but she's still participating in all our exhibitions and she's doing really crazy and great things. And she's doing it very easily, like you're saying, Julia, can you draw some posters? And in two hours, the posters is, is done and it looks like it was, I don't know, Leonardo da Vinci doing it for one month. And she's like, yeah, I did it in the lunch break. And you're like, okay. Yeah, and um, we, sorry. Uh, and um, uh, we have some, uh, don't you travel, but discuss with this uh, poster with some guys because uh, some people um, uh, ask us how you can depict a uh, hero of Ukraine in the so ironical style, yeah? And uh, it is not, not true and so on and so on. Uh, but I think uh, we are. Uh, it, it's it's the right way because people start to remind these people. Yeah, uh, it's you like it or not like it, but you remind these people and try to talk about these people, and uh, and uh, it's a good way for our project. Yeah, we are trying to do a bit less dramatic things in our posters, I guess. <laughs> yeah, more like in funny way of showing who we have. Um, the other, the next project we have is also, it was done for actually audience abroad and we started doing it in 2016 and we had actually exhibitions in Ukraine, Portugal, I think uh, in Poland, in Germany and it was a post uh, project Yellow Blue and we wanted to show Ukraine but in, not in this very national proud way but in this funny way how we know Ukraine how we see it uh, by living there every day and we wanted to show the foreigners how it can look like so we just were thinking oh what cool topics do we have about Ukraine and we were choosing all the topics so starting from Chernobyl and finishing with the Marshrutka who I don't know if you are in Ukraine you know Marshrutkas so we just tried to show everything we like or don't like but we think it's still funny yeah from Ukraine uh, yeah, and we start uh, work on this project in uh, Portugal. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's our first exhibition, and uh, again we start from the lit uh, very very small exhibition. I think it's ten or twenty posters. Yeah, but we, we are starting and uh, continue till till today. And uh, last posters from this series, so you can uh, look on the exhibition, and. Um, I think we have more than oh. 100 posters now, something yep. like that. And we also had like more than 50 illustrators participating in this exhibition. And it's actually cool. We are doing the exhibition in long term and we uh, get to know new Ukrainian illustrators we didn't know before. And we always ask them to join our club to participate in some events. And it's really cool for us because when we were starting, we thought something like, okay, we have 10 cool ex illustrators in Ukraine and that's all. Now we can say we have 50 illustrators and we like them so much. And yeah. <coughs> But I think uh, this project or project like that, it's very great for Ukrainian NGO networking or cultural networking, for example, it's ex exhibition in a big conference, Ukraine-Germany uh, conference for young people, for young activists, and in general, this conf conference is really boring and uh, serious, and uh, our posters make, <laughs> make this conference maybe more, not a funny, but you can uh, think about Ukraine more maybe ironical or cultural or more true, I don't know how that, but it's working, yeah, and uh, you can um, talk about some very serious topic, after that you can uh, look on uh, some, I don't know, some funny granny or Iron Man from Truhani, yeah, and uh, joke about something else, yeah. I know, I, I think it's very good work for networking. Yeah, because we actually, it worked for us uh, with uh, foreign NGOs. Uh, they also saw this project, so somebody sees the project and they offer us to participate, how it actually happened also with uh, this exhibition. <laughs> yeah, so it was something representing Ukraine, but it's an interesting way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and also we didn't uh, have any restrictions about how you should draw and what you should show. We just made a list of topics and we said, okay, you can offer your topics if you are interested in. And for example, on the left you can see Oleg's way of showing uh, Chernobyl. Um, on the right it's my poster about Carpathian Mountains and yeah, 
we worked in t totally different uh, styles, but it was still working well together. It's our favorite <laughs> marshutka. As soon as you will visit Ukraine, you will find out uh, like what are we referring to. Um, <laughs> okay, we sometimes we are criticizing Ukraine, but a bit. It's uh, on the right. You can see a poster about no hot water in our flats, how you're washing yourself uh, by boiling the water in the teapots. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Um, yeah, so we were trying to show all those things from the very wide, well-known as Ivana Kupala night to those small things like you can uh, see only in some parts of Ukraine and some regions. And we also showed some a bit of traditional ways of uh, Ukrainian uh, illustrations. And yeah, we are coming to this topic. We are we were ma mainly do doing projects somewhere. And once, we, again, ag again, I'm saying that we were not um, applying to some uh, grants or something, but we again, we were offered accidentally to open the illustration exhibition uh, place yeah orthodox uh, we have a small very small gallery in kiev yeah but now it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's like an ex uh, example how to work in uh, ukraine did it work in, in ukraine because uh, where we work a lot in uh, some cultural project and cult cultural exhibition we uh, met a lot of uh, cultural activists and so on and uh, very interesting people uh, of course uh, when you try to change something in the Ukrainian culture, you have to uh, normally background for life and uh, uh, a lot of from these guys, it's uh, businessmen from Kiev or Ukraine and have some some own business and uh, one of our friend uh, have uh, like like a coffee points in uh, in a kiev and when uh, she decided to open a new one and uh, and uh, invite us to the make a gallery of illustration in in this uh, place, and uh, and still working <laughs> today. Yeah, and we try to uh, change uh, exhibition maybe uh, per month. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once in a month we are changing the exhibition. We do like collective exhibition, like uh, or sometimes we do the personal exhibitions for illustrators, not only from Ukraine, but also abroad. And it's actually one of those cool things. We, we can sometimes uh, offer illustrators to visit Ukraine from abroad and make them their exhibitions in this very small, tiny place. But still, like, you have a personal exhibition in Ukraine, and it's great. Because um, we have this very, like, still a problem that some people don't think that uh, illustration is something serious. So you often see that galleries are only for serious art and not for the illustrations because illustrations are funny, it's not serious. So <laughs> I think it's uh, orthodox in one of the places in Kiev where you can really see different uh, illustrators and uh, the, check their styles. Yeah, and we actually one of the goals we, uh, of Pictoric was to promote Ukrainian illustrators and we wanted to show the illustrators with we like the most and orthodox gives us this opportunity to show really cool illustrators who were maybe not so famous among uh, ukrainians and some of them were, became more, much more popular than for example five years ago and it, we are really happy to see to, to see that that the situation with uh, illustrators changes from like a bit <laughs> it's also very <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm laughing because Silpo is a supermarket, and uh, you have a lot. We have a lot of these supermarkets through, uh, in Ukraine. And uh, when we have had our first lockdown in Ukraine, people in Ukraine were a bit bored, and they were like, "Okay, nothing is happening. We are only going to supermarkets. Nothing happening." Like already for three months, and Silpo was like thinking something like, "Wait a minute, we can do something great." And they just opened gallery in their supermarkets, <laughs> and we have this gallery already for almost two years now. And uh, actually, it's it's a great success because this supermarket is actually next to my house, and every time I'm going to shop milk or bread, I'm, I can see what uh, illustrators are doing nowadays, and uh, it's 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 some kind of a great new. Um, Think was that was invented because of the lockdown. Yeah, and uh, it's like um, a way of 
uh, cultural occupation of, of <laughs> space, yeah, and uh, when people don't want to go to the gallery, we go to the people, <laughs> to the supermarket, uh, yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, for example, Silpo uh, sponsored a great video uh, for from uh, for about uh, illustrators, yeah, and we can to you know do do that without uh, yeah. this uh, this film yeah we can pr we are promoting our illustrators about these videos and that's also great and they also cool that they're also doing this ecological exhibitions so the topic is ecological and they as a supermarket they are trying to find this uh, like uh, help us I don't know <laughs> if it's helping or not, may, but I, I think that like maybe 20 to 30 percent of people stop and check what's going on with these posters. So it's a great job. Mm. I think it's our posters from our very last exhibition we had in Silpo. Uh, and we're also offering all the illustrators to participate, the new, like also the students, the illustrators we are working with for a longer time. Um, and that's actually the big exhibition. We started our Pictoric uh, Illustrators Club. Actually, the um, story behind the Pictoric was that we uh, went to Poland in 2013, and we were super inspired by uh, illustrators, the Polish illustrators. We were like, wow, they're doing a really great job. They have so many cool books. They are doing so many cool exhibitions. And we didn't have that in Ukraine. And as I said before, we didn't ha have any state um, uh, um, 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 state programs to support illustrators and our idea was just to show to do one small exhibition on Book Arsenal. Book Arsenal is the biggest uh, book fair in Ukraine and um, it would be cool if you could visit it. Yeah, and we decided just to do one small exhibition of Polish illustrators and Ukrainian illustrators on this uh, book fair. And then it started and we saw how many cool illustrators we have and we started to do these international exhibitions every year. So in 2014 we had Polish illustrators, in uh, 2014 it was Czech illustrators. And we were also bringing some of them to Ukraine to do workshops and lectures and we were trying to show also showcase uh, students' works which was also great because you could finally compare how illustrators, uh, how students are doing their job in abroad and in Ukraine. Yeah, uh, then we did the French illust uh, illustrators exhibition and it also was cool because back then we were mostly collaborating with um, foreign uh, cultural institution like um, Czech Institute or French Institute. And this one I think is one of the greatest exhibition we, exhibitions we had. It was an international exhibition and we did I think around 70 or 80 posters. We asked illustrators from all over the world to draw us one poster about the topic, by the way, life is wonderful. <laughs> and um, actually, what was our, one of our goals was to show Ukraine on the map of illustration. Like, because when you're talking about Ukraine, you're usually not thinking something like, oh, it's the um, main illustration po point in the world. So when you're writing to those foreign illustrators, it's sometimes pretty hard to um, to take their attention because you're writing from Kiev and they're like, mm, Kiev, we don't know anybody from Kiev. So in 2017, it was pretty hard to make them collaborate with us, but we did our best and uh, we did those exhibitions and we had them, uh, the illustrators from Japan, from South America, from Australia, from Canada, from the whole Europe and it was like a big deal and we all even had one illustrator coming directly from Japan to visit our exhibition and uh, the funny thing was we didn't even like organize this, she just saw that we have this cool event and she wrote us something like, oh, guys, I bought a ticket, I booked the hotel, I'm coming tomorrow. And we were like, okay, great. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> we inspired her um, on that. And um, yeah, it's another project we did, but I would like to jump to the project we did in 2021, because we did another great uh, international exhibition. and. This time it was much easier to uh, attract people from abroad because uh, they already knew uh, that we have pictoric, that we are doing in international exhibitions. We could say that, look, there's great exhibit uh, illustrators uh, participated in our events. You can also join that. 
And this year, for example, the topic was optimist skeptics, and we also did something like an uh, exhibition for 100 people, and yeah, and they drew the new posters for our exhibition, which is also great. Yeah, and it jumping back. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, yeah. We also did like a very nice uh, exhibitions in 2019, which was uh, actually. Uh, me and Oleg and Lena, we are big fans, uh, fans of some illustrators and sometimes they are for us like, I don't know, Leonardo DiCaprio is coming. So for example, Attack is our Leonardo DiCaprio from illustration world. And we invited him to visit Ukraine. And when he said yes, we were like crying inside and our bodies were shaking and we were like, oh my God, we will talk to Attack. Yeah, <laughs> so sometimes it's a big deal for us to invite those illustrators. Um, yeah, and we can, yeah. yeah but I don't know what I can add for for that, but uh, for us it's real big challenge uh, every year. Uh, yeah, uh, every year <laughs> um, I try to uh, do the really big international exhibition and show uh, what we can do in Ukraine because uh, Ukraine, uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, it's like a white place, uh, terra incognita, on, on an illustration map in the world. Already not. Yeah, but uh, all time we try to show it's uh, we have uh, great places for exhibition, uh, great festivals, a lot of people who were interested in, and uh, when some. Uh, illustrators came to Ukraine. Uh, they are a li little bit shocked, yeah, because uh, it, it looks uh, very great and uh, it uh, feels like a you know rock stars, yeah. Uh, when came to the festivals, it's 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 very cool for us. Yeah, they, they don't expect the festivals be so cool. They don't expect that so many people know them because we have those girls coming and saying, "Yeah, hello, illustrator," <laughs> and the boys, yeah. So. Just a moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we will skip yeah, this another one. Way, yeah. yeah. Uh. And uh, it's about more about collaboration, how we did them. So after doing uh, like small exhibitions, uh, we were invited to some bigger ones. For example, Zoom is a very big super, like, I don't know, um, store in the central street of Kiev and you can buy a lot of luxury stuff there and yeah you can shop there uh, but we were invited to do the exhi exhibition of illustration there and it was like a big deal for us it all, everything looks looked very luxury and uh, really great and it was actually cool that people were coming there to shop i don't know chanel or christian dior and they were also shopping some illustrators illustrations not illustrators i'm sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, and we also organized an international exhibition there on the last floor. Uh, and because we already had these connections with illustrators from abroad, it was much easier. Um, yeah, uh, it's my works on the <laughs> windows of this uh, store. Yeah, for me it was also a big deal. I was super nervous because I never saw something. Uh, I never did something like that, and I actually never saw something like that happening in Ukraine because. For our, uh, I don't know, clients in supermarkets, it's not so easy to think that you can put something super funny on the window and it will it will attract people. They all, um, often want to have to show something, I don't know, more luxury, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So it was a big chance for us, and I hope that it will they will offer other illustrators to do something like that, because it, it's great. And that's it, how the exhibition looked like in this uh, store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a chance uh, did some exhibition because it's an empty place. Yeah, because it's very cheap place, uh, not a very expensive place. It's yes, expensive. Uh, pardon. <laughs> it's very expensive place, and uh, it's a lot of place uh, uh, sometimes are empty, yeah. and. Uh, Manager uh, invite to illustrators like uh, occupy this place for free, and we 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 had the chance uh, do some something uh, nice for us and in a very very expensive place. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and sometimes because we are doing those exhibitions uh, of illustration, and people are searching how to show Ukraine abroad, um, they they know that there exists Pictoric, and actually that's how we were invited to participate in this South Korea uh, exhibition of illustration. 
it happened last year and um, we couldn't visit it, but uh, we saw photos and they were so great and we are still crying because we couldn't visit this exhibition. <laughs> yeah, And it was very interesting to collaborate with uh, South Korea because it's totally different region, uh, a lot of... Uh, Curators from Korea didn't speak any English, so we had to co uh, communicate through Embassy of Ukraine. Uh, but uh, it was probably one of the first times when we had some project in our mind and we were writing something. We want that, 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 and we want those posters here, and we want those, we want those screens there, and they were doing everything we wanted. And we were like, oh my God, it's happening like that. Yeah, so all our fantasies were alive. And sometimes we are also doing the social projects, uh, which is also great because uh, we are trying to make uh, this uh, important uh, information more, I don't know, easy uh, to people. So we are doing social projects. For example, this one was about, uh, what was it about? It's about COVID. <laughs> yes, it was about COVID. <laughs> yeah, but we wanted to do it in a very easy way to reach uh, teenagers um, and to show them how to, you, you should, uh, what you should do during these COVID times. Uh, so it's, it's about responsibility in general. It's a project uh, like um, about media literacy. literacy? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Media <laughs> yeah, literacy. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, we tried to. Uh, did it like a fun, funny comic story for teenagers, and we have a um, like a group for teenagers, and we testing this story, and uh, we are we are filled very old people, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After that, because uh, teenagers um, feel our stories in another way, and uh, we think it's uh, <coughs> very interesting for us. For us, because time to time we try to depict all very serious or understandable, but uh, Chinero says, "Oh, I d understand nothing. It's cool." <laughs> yeah, and and uh, we think, okay, we can uh, do more artistic our comics and uh, more, you know, more fresh and more ir ironic. Yeah, but it's funny actually. As I thought, as I said, we have three people in pictoric, and so we are all illustrators. We don't know how to do with uh, social media, or we, we don't know how to promote ourselves, so it often happens uh, like accidentally. And for example, for this project, we had to do TikTok, and we were like, okay, TikTok, how it works, and we, we did some videos, they obviously failed in TikTok, we didn't become stars there, <laughs> yeah, but, but we now, were trying. But, yeah. but now we have an account in TikTok, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, and we, uh, yeah. No, no, no. but now so often use it. <laughs> we are just checking stupid videos yeah. there, or like, okay. yeah. Yeah, but it's still an inter interesting experience for us as an artist because we are still like can see what we can work with and like what are the things we should work on for our projects, like social media, for example. Yeah, we well, are uh, thinking about future yeah, with a cat and fire gun, <laughs> and no, it's because uh, you are never know what you. W w what will st what will be in the future? Yes, mm -hmm. but uh, in general, it's uh, 2021. It's it's a good year, <laughs> yeah, because its work uh, drove in 2020s. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah we did this future, project yeah. in 2020, so future is here. Yeah. Mm. Oh, just a moment. Now we can skip. A bit yeah, and uh, in in the, in this. Uh, the project for, for us it's very important um, collaborated with the prof prof professionals in uh, an, uh, an another media and uh, in this case we collaborate with Mediana it's um, NGO for work with uh, teenager and kids uh, kids about uh, uh, media about fake about uh, so on and so on and uh, uh, this NGO try um, type a lot of text for this project uh, and very very simple and true text for, for, for teenagers and um, for us it's, it's, it's a, it's a great case when we can uh, combine our skills yeah because we we I think we can just beautiful draw something yeah but time to time we can't say nothing uh, 
about some serious problem. But our friends from an, another NGO help, uh, help us to... Yeah, we are trying to involve uh, like specialists from other, uh, I don't know, media uh, yeah, to help us to show these ideas we have in our minds, but we don't know how to talk about them. And actually, that's cool thing, we are doing uh, the street exhibitions because we don't have so many places in Ukraine to showcase our posters. So actually, we just did a street exhibition next to Orthodox uh, Gallery. And that's cool because people are also passing, just passing by, walking their dogs, and they can see some contemporary illustration. We are just attacking people from everywhere, from supermarkets, from the streets. <laughs> that's our way of working. Yeah, it's another, actually it was a funny project we did with uh, the help of Czech Republic. Uh, it was called Trust But, but Verify and we also did posters about media literacy and we also asked uh, journalists to join our project to write uh, their um, texts about media literacy and how it all works. And the funny thing was uh, that um, when we started drawing, uh, the journalists started writing the text at the same time. So we were drawing something without knowing a lot about media, media literacy. And in the end, we, were, we made a book about media literacy. And then we were uh, reading the text and we were like, ah, oh, that's how the media literacy works. So it was also like a self-teaching project for us. And it was also like, yeah, done. Uh, it's actually it works, I think, from uh, Anya. Uh, in Genia, who are doing the workshop now, so you can also get to know them a bit more. Mm. Yeah, and we also did a street uh, um, exhibition on the street with these posters, and it was also interesting to get uh, the feedback from people who were just walking on the streets because we decided not to do the exhibition somewhere in the city center, but in some residential area where nobody walks around, and the people are just drinking beer on the streets, and there was a place for homeless people to get food, so we mostly talked um, with them about how they feel about our posters, and it was very nice to hear from that, from those people something like, oh, it was so good you did that because I'm eating here every day and it was so boring and now I have such a great uh, view, and we were really like uh, impressed by that because we never, we never heard so much about uh, our art, and <laughs> those people were really impressed because they are living in this area and they don't even have now to leave that place to see Temporary illustration, so yeah. Yeah, it's how, uh, how we presented it. Yeah, this is a book about uh, journalist text and our our illustration, and uh, I think it's uh, yeah the, the same way of uh, collaboration when we try to work with uh, some media what we don't work before. Yeah, because it's our first. Uh, I think it's our first project when we work with uh, journalists, and uh, we are after after that we have a lot of new meetings and new friends and new colleagues from another media, and uh, for us it's um, uh, very important because uh, this is book. After that we um, sent to the regional library and and uh, had little exhibition in uh, some. Uh, another city in, in Ukraine. It's, uh, it's it's very nice because uh, um, I know, I'm not sure you came with us to Chernivtsi or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, sorry, we, sorry. We had exhibitions <laughs> in the small smaller cities, and they didn't even have the place where to exhibit those posters. So it was this topic yeah, I was uh, talking about. Yeah, 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 we had exhibitions on the chairs, on the chairs, posters on the chairs yeah. in the library, but uh, library workers are really happy because uh, in some uh, regional uh, library. Mm, it doesn't have a lot of uh, fresh exhibition. Yeah, it's just some, some I don't know, old, old painting. <laughs> yeah, we are trying to do those events somewhere out of Kiev more often. And I as soon as somebody asks us to come, we are trying to come, even if it's far and we don't want to, because it's, I'm also not from Kiev and I'm from Vinica and it's a smaller city and I know that nothing is, no, okay, not nothing, but not so many things are happening there. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry, it's uh, wrong direction, just a moment. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and actually we are trying all, all to always print the catalogs of the books out of our exhibitions because it's a great uh, 
like think and you always have this memory how it happened and you can also show that I present that to your partners so to show how it was and uh, actually, actually what I we started to talk about is that a picture just happened accidentally but on some point we decided that we should do the NGO to do it more formal way and we can apply on the grants and everything and it's what of it was one of our first grants we got from I think uh, some uh, German cultural institution and we also collaborated there with German writers and did um, a social project about the human rights uh, and the writers wrote the text about that. We did few exhibitions in Ukraine and in Germany uh, and it was actually interesting to collaborate more with foreign writers because they have totally different topics uh, compared to our topics. So, for example, we were talking more about um, how we can uh, move through the world and uh, or about the war in Ukraine and they were talking more about immigrant rights. So it was <laughs> like interesting to see how uh, different the topics we are interested in are. Just a moment. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's actually one of the yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, are we are trying to do more f uh, like to, to talk faster. It was actually actually the project we also did uh, during the lockdown. It actually the Silpo who saw our project, uh, prominent Ukrainians. They said, okay, it's a great idea, and we have a lot of people who are working during the coronavirus time in uh, in these public spaces. So it would be great uh, if we will uh, draw them. I don't know if the people who withdrew were very happy with their portraits. <laughs> I don't think so, yeah. But we tried our best. We did 100 posters in one month, uh, and this uh, exhibitions were actually, um, exhibition was exhibited in a lot of silpos, so it was a great deal. Like a lot of cities in Ukraine saw this exhibition. And I think that the people who withdrew were also like very happy to be at least uh, featured in this uh, exhibition because uh, I think when you're working as a cashier, you're not getting so much attention to your work. And there, those people had the interviews, they were on TV, they were like, I don't know, everywhere. And it was like great to somehow support people who are risking their lives in the beginning of this COVID pandemic situation. Yeah, I think we have a lot of case in this uh, presentation, but we, uh, we are talking too we much. will be <laughs> very short <laughs> yeah, about um, uh, our works. It's weekend uh, with illustrators. It's uh, like a part of our international exhibition. And we try to invite uh, uh, illustrators from Ukraine and uh, abroad to the, some workshops and uh, work with uh, young Ukraine uh, illustrators and uh, like a sh show Ukraine like a modern uh, illustrator's country. Yeah, and we're like educational part of our pictoric uh, like yeah. I don't know, works is like very important. We want to bring the cool illustrators to do the workshops so uh, like students or even young illustrators can participate in these workshops and get m to know more about how it all works abroad. Uh, it's pictorial picnic in a park uh, close to the Orthodox and uh, we are trying to um, collaborate uh, a lot of uh, illustrators, uh, crafters, and so on and so on, on uh, workshops and uh, fair. And it's uh, a print fest. Uh, uh, it's a project of our friends, uh, Anya and Jenya. And we uh, all the time try to, uh, try to support, support it and uh, do some unique exhibition on this fest. Yeah, we are just trying to collaborate with the uh, bigger or smaller uh, like cultural institutions we have in Ukraine. Like Zhenya and Anya started doing Print Fest, I think, four years ago. And that's great. And we are trying to also to participate in these events to show, like, to, to bring more interest in that. And we are also inviting them to participate in our events. So it's, in the events, so it's some kind of this collaboration we do uh, in the cultural field. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think we have too many projects here. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's the last one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's like how we collaborate with bigger institutions in Ukraine. They just like know our project and uh, projects, and they offer us to do something similar. It's also like posters of uh, Ukrainian writers uh, we did for Lesia Ukrainka event. Yeah, and. 
it was fast that's all <laughs> yeah and um, in general we try to put illustration in uh, all media what we what we can because in uh, our opinion illustration illustration it's uh, the most democratic media and it's more modern media who can to uh, work on for example in a some uh, poster at home or postcard in a pocket or something big uh, big uh, poster on on a wall or something else yeah at it's working all time and we try to go in this way <laughs> i think yeah, and we are a bit happy and a bit crazy to do everything we are offered to yeah but in general we should finish it and we are very happy to be here and if you will have any questions we will try to answer them <laughs> yeah. yeah so after this talk yeah, you're welcome. And thank, thank you, you for listening. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Um, I also invite everyone who um, wants to to visit with us the Eyes on Ukraine exhibition now. Uh, so maybe um, uh, all the members of Victoria can also explain a little bit more the uh, uh, their projects. So uh, and I, I want to thank everyone who attended the the talk, and um, those who are watching us online. I invite you to uh, come uh, before the 26th of uh, September to visit the exhibition space. And thank you all so much. Thank you.